time for a countdown today. I've, I've been busy. I lost, I lost track of time. I, I was um, in the machinery shop doing some machining, and next thing I know, it's half past nine. So I raced in here, and then big, big dramas, big dramas. Went to put my microphone on. Dropped it, mic fell out, antenna fell out, so I had to go back to the other one. So I hope we've got sound. I hope the sound is good. Mm. Just got to do a couple of other quick things, and then we'll be right. G'day, Chad. How are you, mate? G'day, Cape Six. Mm. Got a lolly in me now. I just got to whack this on Facebook, and then we'll be motoring. Getting ahead of the game. Won't be a tick. What's on my mind? Mm. Oh, don't you love that? When caps come up when you're in a hurry? I don't. I'll be with you in a tick. So I haven't got a little light on here to tell me um, if I'm caps or not. Okay. Now, what can I do here? Just got to find a, a picture. Can't find any decent pictures. Wait a minute, see if I can find any decent pictures. Auntie Dum Bum. That'll do. That will do. Wait until the picture loads, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. We'll post that, thanks very much. Um, and I'll take that, copy that, share to a page. We'll whack that on Woodworking Masterclass, I think. And we'll pop that in there, but we don't need that because we're already there. So how do we do that? There you go. I think that is it. So now I can be, I can be um, whatever I can be. There we go. Oh, look at it fill up. Oh, I tell you what, I have been flat to the strap. I really have. Normally I have a bit of a nanny nap or grandpa nap after the stream. No, not yesterday. I had so much to catch up on. But I'm just about caught up. So I'll just get myself a drink of water here. I nearly think I nearly finished my breakfast. There we go, okay. Got some H2 ho, ho to keep me hydrated. See if my zippo still works. Look at that. Love, love me zippo. Oh, okay, get that out of the way because it's just going to get in the way. Bob will be down here any minute, I can guarantee it. What have we got? We've got Chad in the room. Oh, I, I saw that. Ah, oh, Chad, g'day Randy, how are you mate? G'day Max. G'day Ray. <clears throat> oh mate, that was... That was a real quick notification. I didn't have a, a lead in time. I just went bang straight live because I realised I was running really late because I was machining some timber. Good morning, Louise. How are you, my dear? How's Andrew? How's Isabel? All good? Are you still playing? I suppose Tempin Bowling's been finished for you, hasn't it? Not good at all. G'day, Bryce. Uh... 
I'll do that when he comes down, Bryce. Reginald, get a mate, Dennis. Hi, is Ruth asleep or is she staying awake for this one? <laughs> Morning, Mark. How you going? Is Prunella in? Is she snuck in? Oh no, not yet. Oh, there you go. In the garden. She might find Max in there. He goes there when we do lathe work, don't you, Max? <laughs> Yeah, that's a pity. Ah, oh, she's asleep, mate. It's a pity about Tim Pimbolan, but it's good that Ruth's asleep. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I'll show you what I've been up to. We're going to do some French polishing today. I've never done French polishing. In fact, I don't think I've ever done a video where I'm doing French polishing. So these hearts over here, they're all ready to get started. I've got to cut all the veneer off of those ones there. Uh, these ones over here I've started to do bits and pieces to and I was just machining up the boards to be lining boards on the inside and then I thought ah oh, crikey I better get a rig on so we might start doing a little bit of French polishing before I do that you have to Build it up a bit with a brush. So that's what I'll do. I'll make a little bit of room here. Wherever I can. The main thing is I'm not too worried about the boxes. I can get them done real quick. But the hearts are the thing that are going to... If anything's going to give me dramas, it's going to be the hearts. I think we should be, should be okay. We've got the A-team on today. Everyone in the chat room cheering me on. Love it. All right, so let me just gather all these hearts together. As I said, the main challenge with this is, I'll make sure I've got 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, where's the 12? Oh, I hate it when that happens. Don't you just hate it? Don't you hate it? Well, let me count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You, hey, Prunella, queen of the mods. How are you, Alan? <coughs> uh, ah, here's the other one. The twelfth. The twelfth one. <laughs> That's good. Oh, you know that big rush to get those things done because they're being picked up yesterday. No, I got a phone call yesterday. Oh, can I pick them up today, tomorrow? <laughs> anyway, the main thing is they are done. We're happy with that. That's good value. Okay. Now, when you're doing flat things like this and you polish them, uh, the big drama, especially with flock, is... You can't get that flock because that's a rayon fabric. If you get shellac on there, it's going to go hard and reduce the effectiveness of the visual effect, or the visual feast, if you will, to take a page out of Basil Fawlty's, one of his episodes. <clears throat> And I was going to make a rubber, but I, f I found one. So we don't need that. I'll just put this over here. Um, ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum. And we'll get this. So we'll give these a brush coat. But what I'll do, I think, is first we'll find something I can rack them in. I know just the thing, the sandpaper racks. If they oh, look at that. Bonus. <laughs> They're not screwed onto the wall, so I'm happy. Let me just pull these off. Put them back on later. We have the technology. Oh, I've got to ring carry up too and get some new belts for my belt sand. I'll bring you out here later because I've, I've still got 
to do a little bit of machining on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've still got a little bit of machining to do on um, the lining boards. So we will do that. Let me just move all this sandpaper out of here. Be with you in a tick. <coughs> oh, no, that's dust. That's what that is. Uh, do I tell you what? I am so pleased. I have an air conditioner in that shed. Okay. All right. These will do. These will do. Then we're going to have to make a jig up for when we're actually doing the polishing. There you go. Look at that. Red. Oh, hello, Bob. I'm guessing it's you. Oh, yeah, hang on. Wait a minute. You can have it. Let me just quickly. Where are we? Come on, you want to be a star? Come on. Because everyone likes you. I don't know why. Mmm. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. Mm. Oh, you're a good pup, aren't you? Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. There you go. Right. Now, let's take care of him. He's left the door open. He's a good boy. I just found out you know, all the local tips are shut now. Got a trailer half full of rubbish I've got to take out and uh, tips are gone. That's a bit of a nuisance. Oh. Anyway, we'll get through it. I haven't done a proper intro, have I? G'day, I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass or a day in the shed with Steve. Um, those of you that haven't been here before, instead of doing a project just for streaming, I'm actually doing real live work that has to be done, and basically, you're just watching me work. So you can all take jobs as managers. You can supervise. Well, there are some people in the chat room that supervise me very well. Brian, Ray, Prunella, Max. Uh, okay. So that's what this is. This is just a stream to do woodwork, but it's in real time. If you've got any woodworking questions or you'd like to see a demonstration of something, um, Ray wants to see sharpening rounds and hollows, which I'll do next week or when I've got these jobs out of the way. I'm just about, yesterday, I'm very pleased with myself. Yesterday I was a day and a half behind and now I reckon I'm about three hours behind, so that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. <coughs> Okay, where's my... Here we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Bada bum. Bum, bada bum. I hate that when you hit your mouse and it all disappears. Oh, she, she's awake and watching. Thank you. Well, good evening or good morning to you, Ruth. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you get Dennis to make a nice cup of hot chocolate? That'll help me stay awake. Good morning, Brian. <coughs> hey, speaking of coffee withdrawals, it is getting grim, isn't it? I'm nearly running out of coffee in the house. Oh, NBN's back. Oh, good, Brian. Happy to see it. Now, hey... <laughs> I don't know if he's got a built-in clock, Randy. I think he just takes random hope. <laughs> if, it's like, um, you know, you, 
You play a poker machine long enough, you're going to have a win. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Okay. So, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Don't want to watch you, Bob. The, 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 um, as I said, the challenge here is not to get anything on the flock. So you've got to be reasonably precise with your brush strokes, I suppose. Once you go on around it, then you can larrup it on. I would actually like this to be a little bit thicker for this brushing coat, but beggars can't be choosers. So the idea with French polishing is first of all you <coughs> build up a base with brush. Now this brush I'm using is a badger hair. You can use squirrel hair or tacklon. Tacklon is a synthetic fibre but there is no brush marks left. That's why I use these particular brushes. And it is a long process, but you do get really great results in the end. I was looking to see if I had any ready-made stuff. I did have some. Hey, Louise, bring that, that bottle of <laughs> D-Wax Blonde I gave you. I thought I had other bottles already pre-mixed. No, you're right, darling, don't worry about it. I'm not a fan of pre-mix, it's just, if I had it, it would have been saved me. Normally I've got bottles of the stuff, but I haven't done any French polishing really for a long time. I've been using cheap French polishing. But providing I can get a gloss up on this, I'll be happy. What was that? Oh, Hilda. I thought you said there was no raw sugar in. Helen's Vale, Max. I thought if you moved up to the Gold Coast, we could get together and have a coffee one of these days. See, the chat stayed in well last night from yesterday's stream. And I got an email this morning from um, YouTube and they're asking people to self-regulate. Which is what we were just saying, we're trendsetters. We're trendsetters. And um, the more honest you are, the less they will use bots to um, surf your gear. So I reckon they must think we're pretty all right because I think it was the last two streams, I've um, got a green light without having to go, what, hang on, someone's rung me again. Ah, oh, Mick or Borton again. Hang on. When was that? Let me ring Mike up again. Remember, Mike's he's a very, very good furniture maker. He rang me up with a problem yesterday. So we'll see if we can work it out again today. Mate, I'm well yourself. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, the, uh, I well, did two things. Yeah. Uh, that, those chisels, you're, you had a mate that was making chisels? Yeah, don't, 
Don't forget you're alive, so don't you swear. Yeah, Harold and Saxon. We poo bum, I better not do that. <laughs> Harold and Saxon chisels, yeah. Hey? Harold. Is he, is he still making them? Mate, actually, he's gone down. He's now working with Terry Gordon doing the planes. So oh, oh. Um, he is doing chisels as well. Okay. So he will he'll be down um, at Austinville, just down the road from you. Oh, okay. No worries. What are you chasing? Oh, it's just my uh, a couple of ones. I I um I want an inch and I want an inch and a half. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, it's just just the ones I've got. You know, I've got mostly. I've still got chisels from when I did my apprenticeship 35 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but I've still, I've still got a few others that I've picked up secondhand. But yeah. Yeah, I just want something decent because even, you know, good quality old ones are getting harder to find and, and that. So I think I'll bite the bullet and buy something that's really well made. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get blue chip? Sorry? Did you have blue chip ones? Marple's blue chip chisels? No. Oh. No, no. No, I've only, I only ever bought the old Carpenter Stanleys. Oh, okay, yeah. I've got, I've got, I've picked up, like, oh, a year or so ago, I picked up some old, um, uh, what's the shark brand, Sandvik? Yeah, Sandvik or Baku, yeah. Yeah, they, they, um, they got a really nice fine blade, which yeah. I like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and, and for doing, um, getting inside, uh, dovetails and that, I had a, a nice little, uh, thin bladed carving chisel, but it's gone west. It just the, the workshop ate it. I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of those things. Yeah, well, I'll give him a I'll give him a buzz if you like uh, later on because I don't know if he's still in transit or what. But I'll give him your number if you want. Yeah, that'd be good. Thanks. All yeah. right. Yeah, that was yeah. number one. I'm doing some French um, polishing live. How exciting is that? Live. Yeah. 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 I'm washing my ute. How's that? You want to do that live? Yeah, I'll come down and put some shellac on your ute. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other thing, too, I was reading all the benefits of um, vinegar. Yeah. Uh, mum's into apple cider vinegar. Oh, right? mate, that's good. So have it with soda water. It's nice. Yeah, and, um, and uh, one of the things was how to remove glue. And I was thinking of your chairs the other day when you're using a file to get glue off. All right, yeah. And I went, you don't do that, but anyway. Um, what, with PVA glue? Eh? Will it take off PVA glue? Yeah, well, I reckon you use um, uh, uh, bicarb soda and, and, and vinegar and make a paste of it, yeah. For PVA glue, not high glue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah no, but, well, no, but for, for high glue and PVA glue, all I do is get boiling hot water out of the tap and and put get some rags and put on the joint for bloody five minutes and it softens yeah the high glue. Oh, you just use your chisel as a scraper to scrape it off i i um, cheat i just put a heat gun on it and then um yeah but you got to wash it all out of the grain yeah and the heat gun doesn't do that so i get a, a green scotch bright all right and, and scrub it as well but it also works well with like, like hot water just softens all the PVA glue too. Oh, okay. I haven't tried that. Um, and nine times out of ten, people that do repairs don't clean joints properly. So underneath the bloody PVA glue is usually animal glue. <laughs> That's so true. It, it comes off pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't think yeah. of that. Well, there yeah. you go. So everyone, you learn something new. If you want to get rid of glue, follow Mike's advice, mixed advice. Yeah, anyway. What are they going? Um, They're going... Yeah, every, every, everybody's got their own things and it just depends on where you learn it. So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll learn from you, you learn from me. That's the way it goes. It's all okay. good. All right, mate. Okay, um, mate. Yeah, well, I'll give Trent a ring uh, if I can catch him and yeah. um, tell him you're after, what, a one inch and a one and a half. Yeah. All yeah. right. No dramas. But I don't want gay handles like yours, I have, like the jacaranda coloured ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mine are Queensland and the mine are Desert Rosal. What colour do you want? What? No, you had one that was purple. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was that was the contractor's chisel. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was fun. No one would steal that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> colours coming from Grafton, eh? Oh, yeah, you. No, go away. All right, mate. I'll, I'll catch you later. I'll catch you on. Cheers, Mick. Bye. Bye. 
Well, there you go. I didn't know that. That's how you can get rid of PVA glue. That's a good one. What do we got here? Where are we up to? Hey, Wombat! Hey, George! The wood welding fabricator. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I don't eat it because I want to eat it then. I eat it because the dog expects me to feed him. Now he's come in. He's opened the door. I'll shut the door. I guarantee you'll go back out again. You're a pest, aren't you? But you're my pest. There we go. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So we've got Susie's segment. I don't know what she's been doing. I've been down here since about 7 o'clock. Or well, maybe just a little after that. It really does, this does have nice colour. Honestly, it does. Oh, I've run out of, I've run out of rack. When I've done this, then I'll start cutting off the um, rest of the veneer of the box tops. This is a bit that takes time. And you can't talk when you're doing it either, because it's like colouring in. You've got to stay, well, colouring, you've got to stay within the lines. This, you've got to stay outside the lines. <sighs> Frank, good day, mate. How are you? And Lucas? Where are we up to? Five past, six minutes past five. What about to you, Jeff? That seems to be a um, sociable hour. Or time. And, oh, that's the other thing. Flies love this stuff. I don't know what it is, but once you start doing it, flies appear. There's another weird thing in Australia. We've got a timber called Huon Pine, which is beautiful. It's, a lot of the trees are over 3,000 years old. Um, it's just a glorious timber to use. Does everything well. Uh, it's a yellowy colour, very, very tight grain, as you can imagine, with a 3,000 year old tree. But once you start turning it, now I've been in my place, I've been in New South Wales, I've been, I think, uh, yeah, different places in New South Wales. As soon as you start turning it, these little critters turn up. They're yellow and black, they're, they're not a wasp, they're a fruit fly or something or other. And they just turn up. And if you walk away from your lathe, uh, any length of time you come back, the entire timber is covered in these little black and yellow insects. So what I've gleaned is the smell of it is uh, very similar to it's either a hormone or a pheromone of this particular little insect. And it attracts me. I've never seen them before. Never seen them on trees. Never seen them on the ground or anywhere. And then all of a sudden you crank this up and boom, out they come. There we go. Okay. That for a bit. Um, 
that's good. You're back on. You're back. Back on Wombat, nothing worse than having a pale failure. G'day, tea dog. A fruit wasp. Yeah, something like that. No, a fruit fly, I think it is. G'day, Stephen. How are you? Thanks for dropping in. Oh, you doing your... Oh, there you go. Are you using the same solution we use, Jeff? Oh, okay. What did I say I was going to do? Oh, I've got to cut the rest of those uh, things off. So I'll just put that there. Go and get a couple of these. And start cutting them off. Actually, I'm not. Oh, no, I might not. Oh, bee, 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 bee. Maybe two at a time, because I'm feeling good. <laughs> so these are all the tops that are now being veneered. Excuse me, we've just got to get all those back to a nice edge. Don't forget when you're cutting stuff off like this, put something underneath it and it'll give you a sharper edge your knife to run along and I'm going to sharpen that knife because it's blunt. Oh, I'm so looking forward to having these boxes finished. I guess you are too, then we can move on to something else. Much more relaxed. Where's that carving chisel go? Here we go. I'll have that one too. But I don't. Oh, I was talking to Theo yesterday. He's good. going fishing today, so he informed me. I've moved my mouse and lost everyone. There we go, we're back. <clears throat> oh, that's good. I, I lost you there for a minute. Oh, that's good. No, mate, that, Al, it was you that, yeah, you sent me the picture of that. That's a gorgeous dog. It's got character. No. He, you know Theo, he doesn't take any chances. He, um, his mate asked him to go out in the boat and he said, no, I won't. I'm not going out in the boat because of the, the distancing thing. And apparently, um, you can't go out in the boat now anyway. But he's going along a... Uh, what did he say? A creek bed. And they're just walking along a creek bed and trolling or something or other, but they're keeping their distance. So I don't know what he's after. I think he just wants to get out. He might be feeling a little bit hemmed in. As I'm sure a lot of people are. But let's get back on the woodwork. There's enough time to think about that. 
I'm looking forward, as soon, soon as this is finished, the next job off the rank, next week, apart from doing demos, uh, Paul, I haven't seen him back in the room, but wanted to know how to make cock beating, so we'll do that. In fact, if I get around to doing some of the internals, internal lining today, uh, that's really, I do half of the cock beating process while I'm doing that, so I can share that with you. And cock beating is, there's two ways. What it is, if you have a look at antiques, you'll see around the drawer, particularly the drawers, or sometimes the doors, they have a very, very small rounded piece right on the edge all the way around. That's called cock beading. And there's two types. There's one type that you actually fit on the drawer after the drawer is finished. And the other type is actually an integral part of the drawer. I prefer the other one because I think the other one looks clumsy and it, it hasn't got as much finesse about it because it's chunky. Um, I think, yeah, I've done both, but in the main, I do just a single one that gets fitted to the drawer after it's been made. And you nail it on. It's only about an eighth of an inch wide 3 sixteenths of the absolute most, and you nail it in place. There you go, that'll get your head wearing, won't it? How do you nail something that thin? Well, I'll show you. Dun -dun. Oh! I was watching some of the comments yesterday. <laughs> Someone commented, I think he's feeling the pressure of a deadline with the things that I was making. No, it's just I wanted to get back and do this. No, don't let pressure get to me. If you do, if you let pressure get to you, it's, it's what's the word? Not anti-productive, counterproductive, that's it. Because you stress out, you rush, you make mistakes, and it takes you longer to fix the mistakes, plus you're in a bad mood. So it's not to say I wasn't always like this. I used to get quite emotional about things sometimes. Got to be time for Susie to be down here soon. Oh, I think I'll, I've still got a bit of that mud cake I got from the other day, so I might. There you go. What did I say? I just, this very minute, I said, it must be time for Susie. Or I might hit her up to bring some of that mud cake down. Huh? Hello, my darling. Hello, love. I'm probably a little bit early today, but I'm... Oh, that's all right. We don't mind. They're most likely sick of watching me do the same thing over and over and over again. Because, I'll tell you for why, I'm sick of doing it. Oh, Tracy, if you're watching, g'day. Give that big lump next to your thump as well. <laughs> ah, what have we got? Be a voice, not an echo. Oh, I like that. That's, that's, well, they didn't see it. Hang on, we've got to go to the, no, no, we can do that one. That's it. Here we go. Susie's saying of the day. Be a voice, not an echo. Hey, what, isn't that a good one? Instead of just saying what everyone else is saying, you just stay what's in your heart. Be true to yourself. That's Share right. it. That's it. So what are you up to? How, what are the chillings up to? Oh yeah. Well, you got them in detention yet? <laughs> no. You caned them? 
No. Well, you're not blaming them. catching up on all the stuff that they have to do it. Oh, they're behind with. Yeah, right. No, well, you know what my need that come Yes, that's I right. see. You know what your thoughts are. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hey, Wesley! Hey Ange! If you're there with Wes. Wes says hi. Six knots says hi. Brian says morning. Wombat says morning. Lucas, she's formal too, isn't he? Mrs. Hay. John, g'day, John. How are you, mate? How's your work from garage, your uh, teaching from the garage going? Prunella says, hi, Sue. Ray said, g'day. Uh, Julian's hi, Sue. Well, don't you get a lot? Did I ever? What? What have we got on the high Randy? From memory, hang on, not from memory, from pins, right now. Yes, you got it, you got, you got it. Did you remember back that far? Yeah, we use, we use pins, so we've got to go up to Susie's sewing room and nick some pins. Oh, okay. And Ruth and Dennis say hi. Hi, hi, hi. Ruth, Ruth is staying awake, because I, oh, I told okay. her to, uh, to uh, no, I asked her to tell, good as good. I asked her to tell Dennis to go and get her a hot chocolate. Oh, fair enough, Because then you stay awake yes. better than them, can't you? Look at that flipping fly. I'm going to squirt oh, it. Where's I? And as soon as you start shellacking, I think it's the, the alcohol they yeah, come around. Yeah, they like. Go and nick off. Go away, AA. So, okay, when you're finished, uh, are you doing more masks? Oh, I'm doing more masks, and at the moment I'm doing other sayings. Well, that's what Max wanted to know. Uh, Mrs. Hay, Mrs. Hay, sounds like me mum. Um, magical saying, what, what have you for today? Well, we showed them that. Just don't say, bah. Okay, fair enough. Morning, Sue. Morning, morning, morning. What are we doing? Um, you need that. Mike! G'day, Mike! Can you get your wedding photo? We wanted to see why you made... Go and get me... Go, you just! And, and... Yeah. Can you bring a bit of mud cake there? If there's any left. There better be! Oh. It's mine! <laughs> oh, I'll smack them! Mate, I was, I was, I was champion when I got married. I was not allowed to laugh, not allowed to laugh, right? Because it was in the 70s and we actually do have a photo in the lounge room. Oh dear, oh dear. Hey, Nader, did someone just sneak in saying Nader? Well, g'day. Where's Nader? Oh, I've missed you. Well, welcome, Nader. And Brian. I don't think I've said good morning to you, Brian, have I? What have I done? Oh, when that woman comes in, I just get all... I lose the plot, I do. Shh. Don't you dare tell her. Yeah, I, I know the kids won't be doing schoolwork when she's not there. It's do the boom, 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 boom. Yeah, mate. Oh, it's a flash suit too. I think, I think it cost me twenty-five dollars to rent. Pretty awesome stuff. At our wedding, you just laugh when you hear all these. These. Oh, wait until Susie Q comes back. <laughs> You just laugh at the cost of weddings nowadays, don't you? You just gotta be kidding me. Now I know she's getting me mud cake because it doesn't take that long to walk up to the house and get a photo. Hey, Debo, are you on? Whoops, I didn't put that behind there, I could tell. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh dear, I don't know. What do you reckon I should do? I don't know whether my drone, I got a phone call from the drone repairer yesterday, and my drone is beyond redemption. 
I'm really, I don't know if I should buy another one or not. So I don't know. Hey, even Susie, I said, what should I do? And she said, I don't care. You know I'm going to say, yeah, go and buy one. But I don't know. I really wanted an owl. Use it when I go out west uh, in the bush and use it for cinema photography. Cinema photography, cinema, well, whatever it is, taking pictures. But I don't know. So put it in the too hard basket for the moment, I think. Here she comes. I think. It's either that or Bob's coming first. Oh. Either that she's going to get some embarrassing photos. Oh, thanks a lot, people. You mutt. Okay, when you don't take that corner right off, this is what happens. See that little bit coming out of the edge there? That's what happens when you don't take this corner right off. So, that's what they make super glue for. Good old super glue. If I can find some. Oh! I'm going to put my glue pot on just in case I need it. I don't know. This stuff, honestly, you, you use it once and then throw it away. That one's going hard too. Got to find one around here somewhere. I had one yesterday. I want to put a top on that too. It's going to be something different. And as you can tell, and I'm, I'm not making excuses. I didn't get to tidy. There we go. Didn't get to tidy the shed up yesterday because I was too busy doing this stuff. And as I've said before, with super glue, I use ordinary um, sellotape, if I can find it, rather than masking tape because it doesn't make such a mess when you're taking it off. But in this case, I'm, oh no, there it is. Oh! So ordinary clear sellotape on that. You can just see, it's just the smallest, smallest bit poking out, and that's what caused that. So we'll just knock that off. So it doesn't happen again. Ah. Yeah, good on you, right? I always count on you for support. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know where she's going. Oh, she might be on the phone or something or other. Well, there you go. So, well, you got a lot of time to watch us, us Wes, Wes. So what's happening with martial arts? Has that been curtailed? Or are you, were you having private lessons? Yeah, I know, Bob wants some mud cake. He's not getting it. <clears throat> Oh, 
here she comes. Tea dog, uh, my eyes are falling, so I'm going to go to school. All right, mate, all the best. Thanks for dropping in anyway. <coughs> yeah, hand router will do it. Or if you're careful, um, where well, you can just do it with an ordinary saw. Just do a bit at a time, bit at a time. Uh, chisel, that's another way. Just chisel it and then a little bit, a little bit. Hand router. Uh, if you've got a Stanley 45 or a rebate plane, that'll do it. Or the other thing, you can really cheat. You can, you can leave the back the way it is and you stick thinner pieces on the back, which then, by default, will give you rebates. There you go. Where there's a will, there's a way. Now, I've lost the other box. What do I do with it? Oh, fair income. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll get one of these. Oh, I've got two here. And then I've got one more to do after this. And oh, then I've got to clear. Here we go. Here she is. All right. Embarrassment. Oh, how embarrassment. The kids. The kids what? <coughs> when I pulled the mud cake out, they discovered there was mud cakes there. There is no more. There is no more? No. All right. Just, um, should we just get the fly poo off of that? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. Noah goes, oh, I'll have some. I said, no, you won't. That's yeah. Papa's. Yeah. I'll go crook. He said, well, you go crook anyway. Well, he's got you pegged. Can't <laughs> argue with that. Oh, look at that. Hey, you were a bit of addition those days. Thanks. No, you were. Good score. <laughs> Been a while since this has been cleaned. I don't have time to dust. There you go. Oh, it's nice. All right. Not allowed to laugh. Cause. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Here we... Now, the bird, the bird on the next to me is her. Come over here. Come over here this way. All right. The bird next to me is her. Hey, is that, is that just swish or what? There you go. Many, many moons. Many, ago. many years ago. That was when I was in the army. And we used to let our moustaches grow down until we were told to cut them back. That was it. That was in Victoria, Max. There you go. Susie Q. Hey, you were all right. Thank you. No, well, you're still all right now. No, I, I haven't changed much. Oh, okay. But if you believe that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah, no, I've got, I should be right because I'm on a different microphone now, but I will, oh no, we're getting low. So, <clears throat> hang on, I'm going to try something here. You try talking. Me try talking? Yeah. I've never had a problem with that. Oh, well, that's true. And no. I'm. <laughs> And, and just, you should have a microphone there. Well, I should have a microphone here, yeah, should you I? just ask the people if they can hear you. Can you hear me, folks? If so, play yes. If not, say, not a chance. And we're not getting any answers. Oh, that's <clears throat> Yeah, I, get... I, I am getting something in mind. I don't know. Oh, okay, no. We're not getting any answers. You're not getting any answers at all. No. That's because you're not looking down here. You've got to go down there. Oh. Ah, oh, there you go. All right, hang on, we'll go. There. Yeah, we're back to this one. Okay, fine. So, there you go. What have we got? Oh. <clears throat> Mud cake. Yeah, where's my mud cake? Give me some of that. Anyone use tried and true finish? It's sold here in the States. Varnish blend, putting on. Picture frame. You're working on roof. Padau kickeries. I'm so excited to see finishes. Oh, that's good. Well, we'll see if we can get some finishes. I, I haven't tried that. I haven't heard of it before, to tell you the truth. Anyway, guys, I'm going to do some work. <laughs> 
Oh, hey, yeah. You, <laughs> woman. Try. You, woman, work. Yeah. All right. Well, See ya. What? At least I'm not pregnant. I might be in the kitchen, but. Yeah, you're barefoot too. I know. Well, two out of three ain't bad. Meatloaf sang that. So there you go. Oh, you heard from the kids? No. All right. I see you soon, me darling. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, mm, okay, more. We were, and, and did you know, I mean, it was really funny then, because I'd been hospitalised for some reason or other, and back then when you were in hospital, that was it. If you... If you're too sick to work, you have to go to hospital. And I'm trying to get the chief medical officer to let me out on the weekend. He's going, no, he said, if you can't do full duties, he said, you've got to stay in the hospital. I said, but sir, I'm getting married tomorrow. He said, well, I, I, no, what was he? He actually said, oh, I thought that was going out of fashion now. This was 1975. He said, what would you want to get married for? I said, because I love the girl I'm marrying. Oh, oh, well, all right, well, you must be fit for full duty. So there you go. I went and got married and then bang, back on the playground on Monday morning. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, well, no, it wasn't a plant here. I thought I looked pretty squish. Uh. <laughs> oh, you covered that well, Prunella. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I won't say it, but. I've changed because I've had to live with her for 43 years. Shh. Shut up, Ray. Don't say anything. Uh. Oh, this blinking. I think it just goes crazy. It, I'm reading it and then all of a sudden, boom. There it goes. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, won't go there. <laughs> we were living in a in a flat in um, in Victoria, and we had my parents there and Sue's mum. So yeah, and, and Sue and I gave our bed up, and we slept on the floor. How good is that? See you, Dennis. All the best, mate. Catch you later. <laughs> Hey, Ray, you'd be surprised how deep I can go. Oh. No. Go away. I'm going to eat it. Oh, you fall. Oh, God. The little puppy dog eyes. Are you not getting the eye thing? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. You'll have to excuse me while I finish this. Mm. I read somewhere, it was on Facebook I think, when you buy a dog, You're making a conscious decision to never eat a whole sandwich ever again. It is so right. But how can you refuse them? Oh dear. So I'm using the wrong mallet, I know I should be using a round one with carving chisels. Oh. I think Theo made me this one. <laughs> now it's all stuck to my teeth.
Whereabouts in Victoria? No, that was at um, Bandiana. There you go, there's some lovely Australian names there. Bandiana. <laughs> Sounds like a girl I want you to get. Bandi <laughs> Bandiana. Bonagilla. Tangangalanga. Yakandanda. All near the snow fields at Falls Creek. But if you're new to it, I'd really appreciate it if you can smack the subscribe button as well and the notification, then you know what I'm on. But I'm on the same time every day. Oh, that's morning tea, T Bone, so I'm getting away with that one. It does. It sticks to the teeth extremely well. Yeah, that's it up near Albury. We actually lived in Lavington for a while. And then um, we moved back over the border. Remember the old fruit fly gate you had to go across every day? You weren't allowed to take fruit across the border. But if you had an apple for lunch, it was a bit hard. That's the place, Max. I bought a car from Wangaratta once. Great names in Victoria, I tell you. Pachuca. Yeah, there's a good name for you. <coughs> I might mean... I've I like that one, Brunelli. You, you, you can self-moderate yourself on that one. That, no, that's, there you go. Uh, time for a cup? Of, oh, I think so, Brian. I, so I got the mud cake. I didn't get the coffee. I'm getting low on coffee, too. I'm going to have to buy some more. You know, it's a funny thing, I really miss going to my local coffee shop because they're a nice bunch down there. A place called Mondi Mondi's. And um, I thought, I really like that coffee, so I might buy myself a coffee machine. And coffee beans, best beans I've ever had. Oh, a mate of mine used to make me a coffee when I go and visit him. And they're Ethiopian coffee beans, something like... $55 for 50 grams or 100 grams. Or so. It's something ridiculous. But oh, gee, it was nice. And, um, and I got to thinking, hang on, it's not so much the coffee that I like, even though it's very nice. When I go there, I love it because I can sit down, someone makes me a cup of coffee, while well, I can catch up on correspondence. That's where I answer a lot of my YouTube messages and what have you and um, I can relax and, and switch off I'm not in the shed I don't have anything pressing going on so I decided no I'm not going to buy a coffee machine because it's not so much the coffee the machine makes it's the fact someone's making it for you and makes you feel a bit special So there you go. So if any of the crew are watching down there, you do. You make me feel special, guys and girls. Actually, they're nearly all girls. Mm. I'm trying to work out the best way of doing this. So if you think I'm doing things differently all the time, it's true, I am. Okay, this, this is going to be a relatively boring stream because 
repetitive work is. But as I said before, and six knots agreed with me, it is good to see how much work actually goes in to something being made. And then, you know, when you're in a, a gallery or at a market or something, you see someone asking X, Y, Z for a product, you go, oh, that's a bit dear. Just think how much time and expertise goes into making that. I told, told Susie what a lot of you said she was too cheap on her quilts. So that's it, she's put her quilt prices up, which I think she should too. I've had this theory, here you go Mike. Here's another one for your business class. Always go high because you can always come down in price. Very, very hard to go up. If you say to someone, oh, that's $30, and they go, that's cheap, they say, oh, no, look, I'm, <laughs> I meant $50, you'll lose the sale. But if you go, oh, no, look, it's $50, oh, that's a bit dear, so, well, you know, I might be able to do it for 45 or 40 there's a good chance you'll get the, the sale. A friend of mine that I used to do a speaking circuit with, chap called Brett Chamberlain. Hadn't seen him for years, decades even. But in um, <clears throat> a book he wrote, and this is so true, it is not what people pay, but what they perceived they saved. So, I used to be a car salesman once. Oh, I know. I've done, believe me, I've done a lot of things. And, um, yeah, if you come in with a low price straight away, you'll lose them. Whereas if you let them fight you, you might have <coughs> four or five thousand dollars on a new car, four or five thousand dollars fat in the deal that you can give away. And if you go up and say, oh, look, you can have it and you knock that five grand off straight away, you won't get the deal. But if you make them fight and struggle to get a thousand dollars off, they think they've done well. And it's the perceived savings they made that makes the deal sweet. I always believe when you're doing, doing business, everyone should be happy, everyone should win. So I should be able to make a reasonable profit and you should get a reasonable deal. That way everyone, everyone's happy and it's, oh, fair, this one's, this one's still in the clamps. Let me just go and get the other part of that, which is over here in this other press. Sorry, Bob. Oh. There you go. Sure, good job, aren't you? <clears throat> and I might, we might. Um, might start putting a rubber over those things, and we can actually start the French polishing process. There's a couple of ways you can do it. Two main differences, this is weird. There's a French polishing, polishing, and there's English French polishing. Both basically get you the same result. And in most cases, it's the difference is terminology, not the process. Um, Main difference, I think, with the English process, we use raw linseed oil as a lubricant, and the French use paraffin oil as a lubricant. And we call our pads rubbers, and the French call them tampons, but it's the same thing, it's just a pad um, I think they're made the same way. Okie dokie. Thank goodness. 
last one of these, then we'll put some finish on, then we'll come back and go back over these again. Dear, oh dear. Oh. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> Wales have got some pretty interesting names, Julian. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I can't believe that. A friend of mine um, will go and stay on his farm sometimes when we go out. Timber getting out west, and he's Welsh. He calls me the Sassanac. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's got a a um, fervent hatred for the French, and <laughs> that goes back to Agincourt apparently. But uh, anyway, yeah, he told me there's this railway station over there. It's got something like 26 letters in the name. Yeah, I think the English names are very self-explanatory, aren't they? Bath. Well, that's where the baths were. Tunbridge Wells. Well, that's where the wells were. Um, Norfolk. That's the northern folk. And then you got Sussex, Essex, Wessex, northeast, southwest. They didn't have Norfolk. Took me a while to work out what they meant when you've got London and then you've got the city. Oh yeah, well, sort of in the city, London, and no, apparently the city's the, the financial area, and it's the city. If correct me if I'm wrong, please do. It's the city that the Romans built and walled, so it got called the city. Now what am I going to do? Let's. All right. Let's rub these back. To do that, I'm going to go and get some clean water. Oh. No, Bob, it's only water, mate. Okay, it's no big deal. It's, it's water. doing French polishing and there we go I just put a little bit of dishwashing liquid in the water what that does is when you're running when you're sanding the French polish back which is what we're going to do now and I think I'll use like some thousand grid if I've got any 1200 uh, might be a little bit sad. There's some thousand. Uh, might try some 800 then. Oh, I would go as low as 600 if it was really, really heavy. Oh, well, that's, that's a bit of 600. If you put detergent in the... Um, water it acts as a lubricant and 
you'll find that it sands a lot better. And it's just very lightly. Don't get that flock wet. And you just lightly go over it. Like that. And you denib it. Because if you felt these, it's just a little bit rough to touch. So this is 600 wet and dry. And let's get a bit of cloth. A bit of rag. Got to bring another bag of rags down too, I think. Geez, these are good sheets. No, they won't rip in a hurry. There we go. Then just wipe it off and it's nice and smooth to touch. I'll do a couple and then we'll actually put some French polish on some. Whoops. A lot of people are frightened of timber and water, but don't be. And this has been put on with high glue, which of course water will dissolve, so you've got to be reasonably quick with it. I'm going to have to make a jig up too, which I'll show you what I mean by that, to hold it. whilst you're polishing it. <coughs> so I might what? I might just move these over. Yeah, I know, if there's a clatter, crash, bang. Uh, who was it yesterday that when I was turning those things, oh, I'd just love to lock, knock all those pyramids over. And then I actually went and did it. Yeah, good on me. <sighs> you can tell all the ones you haven't done because they're rough to the touch. Good morning, Pamba. How are you? <coughs> Welcome to the workshop. Now, what I did with these, because that Amboinia is a burl, I actually put linseed oil on it, raw linseed oil on it to start with. Um, it sort of seals the burl. I use it a lot. I've heard people say you shouldn't put it on um, straight grain timber when you're polishing, but to me, I don't think it hurts. And when you're in the French polishing process anyway, you uh, actually pull the oil out because it'll float to the surface of the polish. And in the last phase, which is spiriting off, you're actually pulling it all off. Let's get all that water off so it doesn't affect the glue. Once, uh, once this flock has been dry, it's no dramas touching it. It won't come apart. But it is very, very important when you initially do it that you don't touch it until it is dry or else you, you will you wreck your job. Okay. 
Okay. Put that down there and we'll put this up here. Oh. So I think I'll take these out. And I can put the ones I've done back in. Then I won't get confused. There we go. Have you ever had New Orleans coffee? Oh, I've got, T-Bone, I've got a friend who uh, is from the States and whenever we go around to his place, he says, you want a cup of Mississippi mud? And it is strong. I mean, you got to stir it very quickly with a spoon or the spoon melts. Is that what you're referring to? It is extraordinarily strong. <clears throat> um, ba -dum, ba -dum. Ah. No, Springfield, they've just shut down, mate. Um, no, it's uh, Mondays at um, num, 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 Flagstone. Yeah, they've just shut Springfield down, and I don't know how much longer they're going to be operating at, Spring at uh, Flagstone, but that's the one I used to go to, although I have been. I have been to the one at Springfield. That's pretty good, too. I love their Monday's burgers. Oh, they're just the best. I'm catching up. What are we? Oh, I'm that far behind. And then, what, you're going to cut them off, Mike, if they're not online by Friday. That's what Susie said, because uh, we've been homeschooling Anthony for the last couple of years, but Noah has been going to mainstream school, and uh, he just can't sort of see why he has to do schoolwork. And, of course, if he doesn't do it, then Anthony goes, well, I don't think I should do schoolwork. One of those things. They should be doing schoolwork and not eating my mud cake. Uh. Oh, I'm traveling. Good night, mate. <coughs> <coughs> Right ahead, my friend. What would you like to know? It'll give me something to think of instead of doing what I'm doing here. Ask your questions. <whistles> just in case, I'm just erring on the side of caution, Trevor. I just pulled that one out. 
But we know what you mean. Bada pum, pum, ba -dum -dum. Mm. <whistles> Same with yours, Max. <clears throat> I just don't want anything to to wreck me chances. What made you go into this industry of building things? Um, <clears throat> because I was told I was no good and I didn't have an aptitude for it, I think. That was my first motivation. And uh, the other thing was, I think economics, we needed furniture in our house. So... I couldn't afford to buy it. We started making it. And I realised I really enjoyed doing it. And sort of went from there, I suppose. I just enjoy it. And uh, I like making things. I like being creative. I like the challenge of how do I do something. So oh, I'd say that's how I got into it. I definitely didn't get into it for the money, I'll tell you that. But I think at the end of the day, for me, I like to think, hey, I made something that wasn't there this morning, rather than saying, oh, I filed 15746-1027 forms and uh, did it in pink and duplicate, you know. So that's it. I saw something on Facebook the other day, they're looking for authors to put books into something or other, so I'm going to submit at least one of my books, the one I'm the most proud of. Let's see what happens. I love writing. I haven't done it for a while. My dad was an author. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, and it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Now. No? No, is it? Yeah, absolutely. It's good to do something with your hands. Whether it's cooking or painting or gardening, it doesn't matter. But you get a reward for your effort, which I think is lovely. And yeah, Dad used to say to me that the hardest thing about when you finish a story is you have to say goodbye to the characters. Um, it's funny because my characters are still with me, so I guess I might have a few more stories. I don't know. I've got one that I'd love to finish. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. It got to a certain point and then my life did a 180 and I just don't know where to take it from there but I guess I guess I'll get back to it when the time's right. Oh, 
call me Steve, for goodness sake. I think I'm my dad otherwise. Thanks, Quaid. Uh, when do you do when you've been making something and it's not coming out as you planned? Uh, I generally go and have a cup of coffee and walk away from it for a bit. And then I come back and just keep on going. And sometimes you've got to change the design a little bit. Sometimes you've got to go a different direction. And sometimes, yeah, you've got to throw it in the bin and start again. So it's one of those learning experiences, I guess. Uh, oh, good on you, Trevor. Uh, say goodbye to characters, not in my case, they get in. Yeah, that's it, Prunella, they're there. They are, they're as real to me as Bob is. Why don't you sit down and write your life journey? Well, funny you should say that, Brian, because the, the one that I was working on uh, wasn't the full life journey, but I got to this stage and I didn't know where to go. And then when I actually examined my life, I thought, oh, hang on. <laughs> That's why perhaps this is a bit biographical. And Sue goes, you think? <laughs> Single woman, that one. All right. Um, let's just, 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 just. Where's a soft drink bottle? I did it. This is, um, I'll do this in a minute. Hang on. I'm just looking for a lid. All I want is the lid. All I want for Christmas is the lid. Oh, the matter we use this one. Okay. Got that, got that, got that. Um Rolling seed oil. What I'm gonna have to do is make a jig up so we can do this evenly and properly. Uh, oh yeah, look, um, uh, no, if, if, you, if you're working for someone and you have to do a job, well, you don't have a choice, you've got to keep going. But you generally make mistakes because you rush things um, and you get impatient. So if you're not impatient, I, I've got some boxes I'm doing here. They have to be finished by Friday and believe me, I wish I could take a shortcut, but I know if I do, I'm going to make a mistake and they won't be ready and therefore it's going to take me longer. So it's just plod on, keep on going. Um, lastly, I want to ask if the government gave you unlimited materials and space to build the most perfect invention, what would you go for? I don't know about an invention. <laughs> the likelihood of it happening is very, very rare. But I would love to have a big shed out the back, say 15 metres. I hadn't thought this through, honestly. 15 metres by 9 metres by 3.3 metres high with gantries and lights, all professional TV equipment. Have a full-time crew, directors, cameras, not script writers because I don't use a script. And I would love to do this full-time and get paid for it. Just share the love of being creative. Whether it's woodwork, whether it's blacksmithing, whether it's sewing, whether it's writing, whether it's, what else do I do? Um, working on cars, anything. But I would just love to full time be a presenter and yeah, get paid a good, a good sum for it, not just weekly wage. That's what I would love to do, Noosa. If you, if you know anyone and you can pull some strings, just let them know I'm up for it. Oh, I did one stipulation. They don't tell me what to do. I get to control, creative control over it. Uh, 
I'm doing mine, Steve, for kids I've found it's too good to... Oh, yeah, no, I'm not leaving out the bad um, by any means, but I'm just not going through all the jobs. I'm generally going... This, this um, book that I was writing, still writing, it's gone through two name changes. Um, it's basically... Uh, what's happened to me since early 90s. Um, struggles that I had to overcome, personal issues that got in the way, being a woodworker, having no self-esteem. I'm starting to tear up. Uh, just losing the plot with the world, actually. And this, this is my world here. I, you know, I, I, we're getting to know each other, I suppose. I come over pretty full on and yeah, it's all great and it's wonderful. The number of people that I've had in this workshop and they've seen me do this presentation. G'day, how are you? This is Steve. And then we go and have a coffee and they look at me and go, where's, where's the guy in the workshop? I said, mate, he's not me. I'm, honestly, I'm really very quiet and I like keeping to myself. Um, I love this because I can talk to all of you out there and we can share things but I feel protected. Um, no one knows where I live. No one knows where I am. And uh, I've, I've got this great interaction with you, the audience, but I've also got protection that I haven't got people coming around when I really don't feel as if I want to be near people. But anyway, enough of that. I'm going to get all thingy. Um, yes, yeah, so it's all good. Oh... Uh, All right, where are we? Where are we? Where are we at? You got, you got me sidetracked. Oh, I've got to make a little duva hickey up. Um, have I done those? Have I done those? I can't remember. I don't feel as if I have. Oh yes, I have. Okay. So I've got to make a jig up that we can hold these things in. Whilst I'm um, polishing them, um, might have to get a bigger bit of plus. Hang on, just there we go. Go and play I Spy for a bit. I'm just going to go and have a look, see if I can find a wider bit of uh, plywood. Well, oh, what's that? It might even. Is that wider? Is that much wider? No. Oh, shoot. Goodness gravy. Oh, do, do, do. How you going, Bob? Hey. Nice and warm there, mate. Is it? Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? Big pudding, aren't you? Big pudding, Bob. Oh, look, I reckon that'll do. Oh. Rubbish, I like to use it for anything else. Get away, darling. There's a good boy. Sorry. Oop. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I'm not wasting that. That's, that's nice stuff. Shh. Himalayan cedar. What's that, right? Oh, look at that. I just found, oh, I just found a whole heap of guitars. Oh, I'll show you that in a tick when I come. Oh, there's another one. They're everywhere. Well, there you go. Oh, dear. Okay, that'll do, and that'll do. And that'll do. All right. Okay. Now I was talking about those little strumstick guitars. We'll, we'll get into those next week, I reckon. It'll be fun. That's one that I've sort of partially finished. So we will make some of those in the coming weeks. Great things to do. And if you've got kids, they'll love them because they can play music. It's open tuning and it's all, all good. Okay. Let me just cut up a bit of this MDF. Oh. 
You go to the, the uh, little bit of extra trouble to do this, and it really does make life so much easier. Where's a bit of pencil? And, and it's good to, you know, just have scrap around the shed so you can do this sort of thing. Oh, hang on, let's go over to the band saw and slice that off. Oh, I was looking for that bit. Whoop. That can go there, that can go. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Love that. Can't go all the way through. Done. bit off there. All this is, is something that I can hold these things with in the vise or even on the tail, on the, so I'll use the tail vise, that'd be a good idea. When I'm polishing it, it makes it a lot easier to hold and you don't run the risk of putting your fingers on your job. If it slips, around here that's a 64 dollar question i would use i would use a staple gun except i don't have my compressor working that's definitely a job for next week it doesn't have to be a tight fit all it has to do is hold it in there so it doesn't move around Back to what you were saying, Brian, with writing. I think it's very cathartic. You can really, I don't know, get some perspectives on things. The other, the other thing I, like, I love is you don't have to explain anything. First book I wrote, I um, had, you know, let me just, where's some nails? Let me just get some nails first. Oh. I've got any here. Bum, ba -dum, bum. Here's a rock. 
Oh, the um, no, I don't think they're going to be quite big enough. Hang ten, I'll just shoot up to the other shed and grab some nails. Gee whiz, it's hot out there. I think it's about 33, 34 degrees and it's meant to be winter. Give me a break. There we go. Yeah, what I was saying, the thing I love about writing is uh, the first book I wrote, <laughs> I wanted, I forget how many it was, but it was so many chapters and I thought I'd finished it and then I was one chapter thought <coughs> one chapter short. So I thought, well what can I do? And I, I came up with a an idea and I just made them in this other place. And you didn't have to explain anything. You don't have how did they get there? It doesn't matter. Or you say and and a few weeks later, or a few months later. They found themselves in wherever. You don't, you know, whereas if you're talking to somebody and you tell them about something you've done, I had to get there. Oh, how long did you stay there for? Oh, you know, no, writing, that's it. And it leaves it up to your imagination to work out how they got to where they were. I'm putting these in, in these bits of plywood and I was putting nails in without the plywood there. Uh, there you go. Alright. Uh, <coughs> Let's go. Not a real good ad on how to use a hammer. I don't know where the little hammer is. It's on that bench behind me somewhere. So as you can tell, this has, doesn't doesn't have to be neat. Now I'm leaving. Oh, Bob, how are you? I'm leaving this area here. So when I've finished, I can just put the spatula underneath. Lift it up and then put it away. That's what that's there for. Yeah, Bob, stay there, but the door's staying shut. Well, do you like looking outside? Is that what it is? You think you're in prison otherwise? <clears throat> All right. So we don't need that because I'm going to use the tail vise. We've got that. We'll bring this around here so you can see this, that. Oh. 
That in there to hold that. Here we go. French polishing 101. Doing a lot of 101s lately, aren't I? This stuff here is called Lintus, L I N T U S. Now, I bought this over 35 years ago. I bought I don't know how many kilos it was, but it, it's very much like a cotton waste and it's a lot cleaner, except, except it's got shavings in it. And uh, that is what you put in the middle of your rubber or pad, depending whatever you want to call it. And this is, now this, this, this one's got to be about five years old. What I do when I've finished, I put it in, wrapped up, put it in there with some um, DAA and it uh, stays moist and you can use them forever and ever and ever. Just, that's just a piece of uh, sheet, cotton. I prefer cotton. Some people use linen. I find linen <coughs> or calico, sorry, I find that too hard. And some people use polyester. I don't like polyester. I much prefer the 100% cotton. So that's what that is. Now this, you put in the middle like that. You sort of make it <coughs> a bit wedge shaped to start with. And then you pull this over. So I'm just going to wet this because <coughs> um, it is a bit hard. Where's the DAA gone? There we go. This is a DAA or methylated spirits. I'm only doing that to soften the, the rag up. I could use a new bit of rag, but this is okay. Okay, now that's soft. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. It's a bit of rag. Put your lintus in the middle or your waist. I've seen people use cotton wool, bring the top over, like that, we'll get a little bit more see, so bring the corner over, and then you bring this in, like that, and this over the top, but you do it so it's tight. So we go there, and I'm going to push down there. Bring that over, turn that under, bring that over, and then you actually twist them both together, and then that tail goes up underneath. So your rubber looks something like that. That's not the best rubber I've ever made in my life, but we'll charge it. By charging it, that means you put shellac in there. This has been diluted. So you put a fair bit in there to start with. Oops. Move that up there.
That goes up under there. Then you give it a squeeze into the bottle if you like. And you're getting most of that coming out. Then this is raw linseed oil. Put your finger in there and just rub it. That's it. And this is how you French polish. You just go all over it. Again, I'm trying not to get anything on that um, flock. The difference, from what I can understand is if you're using a rubber, that's French polishing. If you put the same finish on, use a brush, that's varnishing. And as you can tell, you can just keep on going over and over and over it. There are subtleties. It's one of these things, it's definitely a feel. And as I said, I haven't, I haven't done this for years, ages. Um, and you will get to the point where you think, oh, that's a bit too much. And if you keep on going, you will rip the finish off and then you have to start all over again. So what it is, it's a lot of small coats. Okay, now that one there I can take off. I can put it there. Grab the next one. Put it in there and away we go. And <clears throat> I used to run weekend French polishing workshops. And at the end of the first day, everyone would be so disappointed because their jobs looked absolutely woeful. And then the next morning, within an hour, all of a sudden their jobs come to life. So it's one of those things, don't be discouraged with it. You just keep on, keep on doing it. Then all of a sudden it'll go pop and it'll be there. There's four stages. There's filling, bodying, stiffening, and spiriting off. Most people, when they get to the stiffening side, they want to stop because it looks good. But it's the spiriting off that really gives it its uh, unique quality. And you get such a nice deep shine, but there's absolutely nothing there. It's so thin. But it's important to get those brush coats on first to give you a bit of a um, background to, to work on. And if you're doing a furniture job, you're much better off. You can see how now I'm pulling stuff off. You're much better off. When it starts to pull, finger in the linseed oil, couple of drips on there, lubricate it up again. Um, what was I say? I don't know. Can't remember now. But yeah, when when you come to the stiffening stage, you really put a lot of pressure on it, and I mean a lot of pressure. And you think you're going to rip the whole lot off, but no, it doesn't. But you just get this beautiful deep gloss and there's there's absolutely nothing there really
Yeah, that's that, that's terrible, isn't it, Max? <laughs> You're putting everything down, and then all of a sudden, your computer goes whoop. See, my 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 theory on that is okay. Must have been something wrong. Perhaps you should start again. But it's amazing how many people, we, we all think our lives don't really count for much in as much as, you know, we, we're not rock stars and we haven't invented penicillin or the new rotary gearbox or whatever. So who's interested? But it's amazing how you, people can get just a little insight and it can change their life if you share your life. What do you mean you get stressed? What do you mean you feel insecure? What do you mean you didn't know how to do something? And um, yeah, it's good. And the, the sad thing is, I think you've got to do it for your own, um, not amusement, catharsis. Because, you know, if you want to get it printed or something, oh, no, it's not our genre. Oh, no, we don't do that. Oh, and you, you think it's pretty darn good. Well, how many times did J.K. JK Rowling go with Harry Potter before she got accepted? I think it was like 200 or 380-something um, submissions before someone said, oh, yeah, well, okay, we'll give it a shot. And, and sometimes it's good you just write it so you can, for your own benefit, you can say, oh, well, look, I have done a few things in my life. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm happy with that. I'm starting to dry out a bit now. I'm using the back of the rubber. But we'll keep going. I love it. I really do. I could lose myself for inch polishing. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, if you're doing a bit of furniture, do the fiddly bits first. Okay, if you've got cabriole legs, do the cabriole legs first. If you've got cock beating on the drawers, do the drawers. Then do the sides. Leave the top to last. The reason being, you'll enjoy doing the top, and it's so much fun. And then you get to the stage, oh, I don't want to do the fiddly bits. Whereas you get the fiddly bits out of the way, the reward is, I'm just recharging now, the reward is you... Um, get to do the long, straight, flat bits. Uh, this, this stuff, I'm using D-Wax Blonde here. If I was using Golden Flakes, which is what I used to use all the time, my hands would be orange for the next two weeks. In fact, I think I went to stage there perpetually for months. My fingers looked as if I was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. But it wasn't. It was all just shellac, all French polish. There are things you can get, which I've got outside, called tack cloths. And they're special cloths that just they have a little bit of stickiness to them. So if you do get a bit of lint or something actually come on the job, you just drop this cloth on it, it picks it up and doesn't mar your finish. I don't know if you can see that, but that's starting to really, really come alive. And when you're sometimes doing it, it's, it's, I said, when you're spiriting off and 
stiffening, you're using a lot of pressure. But other times you've got to be like a butterfly with sore feet, as a friend of mine used to say. Keep on going. I'm, I'm, I've been ignoring everybody. I'm sorry. I've been involved. Let me go back a couple of minutes. Steve, it looks like your number eight is going to fall off. No, mate, she's good as gold. Good as gold. She's perched on me. Oh, speaking of which, I was talking to um, Anthony yesterday at Lee Nelson, Australia. He sends his regards. Might catch up with him later on in the year if he comes up here. So he's all good. I was talking about the number eight. As I call it my big behemoth. It's the big fella. I better drink some water. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I needed that too. Oh, my hands are really starting to get sticky now. Yeah, she's good. Do you know what HP stands for? I didn't. But if you read the label, you find out. It actually stands for Houses of Parliament. That's why there's a picture of the British House of Parliament. And apparently it was a source that was developed when the empire just about had the world. And um, all the spices and that from India. And it was made primarily for the House of Parliament. That's why you got HP sauce. There you go, there's a bit of trivia for you. Dumpling folders, that's what it's called. Oh, okay. Are you, why don't you give me a call, Kerry Blue? I mean, not right now. Give us a call this afternoon. I'd love to have a chat. Haven't spoken to you for ages. This is taking me. Did I ever do French polishing with you? I can't remember. Oh, it's just, I can just see it now starting to, to pop. By tomorrow, it's going to look extraordinary. Got um, actual barricades across the border where are you, where you are, Pan? Oh. Yeah, I, I I don't know if I have. Have I? Have we finished anything today? No, we're still working on the boxes, Jeff. Still working on the boxes. Oh, and I'll be happy. I'll be happy when they're finished, I'll tell you. Okay, pad's starting to get dry again now. There's nothing coming out. So I'll just open it up. And we'll whack a bit more in there. Oh, of course you are. And then in case you wonder, of course you are. That was to Kerry Blue. Uh. 
Well, I've got a, another lass, Pam, that, um, and she's, uh, crikey, what's she? She's Blue Wren. And I, I got you confused because you're both lovely. Now, tell me, that journeyman's chest you made, is it in your tool shed yet? Or is it still in the lounge room as a furniture piece? Oh, you have no idea how satisfying this is. Oh, I'm really enjoying this. I was dreading, I'll be honest, I was dreading doing this. But oh, pretty, pretty happy with it at the moment. Yeah, how are you going at the moment? You haven't got any woodworking classes happening. I was talking to Richard the other day. He's closed down. Jeff's closed down. I think Mick has too. Sorry, I'm having a one-to-one -one conversation here. All right, let's get back. Oh, dear. You've been busy, Jane. Well, I'm pleased you took time out to come in and say good day. I'm doing French polishing at the moment. Uh, those of you that are new, that's my dog Bob and he wants to go out only so he can come back in. Oh, come on, let's go. Um, I've got some boxes that I am making that I have to have done by Friday. So there's a bit of a panic on. And what this basically is, is I've opened my workshop up so you're watching me work. I'm not doing something for the benefit of the stream, I'm actually doing jobs that have to get out and you're just watching me work. But don't let that stop you. If you want to know anything, if you've got any questions, if you want a demonstration, by all means, just ask. And I'm more than happy, underline more than happy to stop what I'm doing. And if I'm able and can, I will... Fulfill your request. Next week's going to be a little different because I won't have a deadline to work to. So we can do some more. Have a little bit more variety, I suppose. But I just thought people might be interested in how to French polish. Um, you know, there's techniques that I'm not using here because this is such a small thing, but if you're doing a, a table, you do long eights, you do circles, you do um, reverse circles, you go up and down, you go zigzag. It's just that way you fill all the grain up in all different directions. Oh. Orientations, that's what I meant to say. And if you are new and you like it, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications. But I was only going to do this until tomorrow because I've been on a self-imposed lockdown for 14 days. One of my sons was uh, pretty crook. And the doctor wanted to put him in hospital, but suggested he stay at home because it would be possibly more hygienic at home, given this current state. And he said, but the thing is, no one in, no one out from your place for 14 days, which we've stuck to, except Susie 
had to go into the doctors the other day to have a checkup, and I'm good to report that he is feeling a lot better. He's still got a lot of other issues, but what we had to have him locked away for, he got pneumonia, which wasn't wasn't very pleasant for him at all. Poor young chap. Young chap! He's 47, come on. Uh, whoop. Ooh, a little bit too much there. That's all right. So you just wrap it around there, squeeze, 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 and then go over and just start at the end. Squeeze it back in there. There you go. So you're not wasting anything. A couple of dabs of... <laughs> There's a habit I used to do. I haven't done it today, but... A lot of times you get little bits of fluff like that and it gets on your finger and you go like that and oh, it tastes absolutely horrible because it's straight alcohol. And, oh, look, I'm really happy to see the chat room growing. And I'm actually quite encouraged that I'm getting the views I'm getting. Which means people are <laughs> either very bored or are interested in woodwork. Or both. <laughs> As my son, one of my other sons would say, bit of column A, bit of column B. I would love them, excuse me, I'm going to do that again. I would love them to come home if either of them are watching and then you could come and help me and, and you could learn some stuff and make your own furniture instead of me having to make it for you. There you go. That's a plug. Whoop. There we go. Now the idea of a total full French polish is just mirror all the way along. I'm not going to do that with this. A couple of reasons. One, it's a burl. And two, I don't have the time. But it is going to look pretty special, especially with the embroideries that Susie's done for them. And I hope the, whoops, I hope the client is happy. If, if not, there's going to make some Boxes on the website. Hey, where's Ray? He's been quiet. I haven't seen him for a while. Does he the care? The advantage of having so many to do, by the time I finish this, I'll go back to the first one and it's going to be dry and I can start doing it again. Actually, I think Nick, who I was talking to earlier, Jeff Hanna and I learnt... Um, French polishing is exactly the same time, same class. Teacher was uh, Paul Gregson. The only thing I, I would love to learn, and again, Paul does it. I think Jeff does it too, but I would love to learn um, 
gilding. Not as in horses gilding, but gilding as in gold gilt. Gilding, gilting. With um, gold leaf. That's one thing I've never, never tried. I've never been able to afford to buy the gold, I suppose. This one um, is a lot smaller because this one was the test one I made to see if it would work and it worked out all right, so I might as well use it. It's amazing how much pressure you can put on once you put those couple of drips of linseed oil. Now that's raw linseed. Do not use boiled linseed. You will get into all sorts of trouble. Because boiled linseed has a drying agent which eventually will gum up. Whereas linseed will stay wet for several days. Oh. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where's my mouth got? I'll put the stand over my mouth. A bit silly. <laughs> silly things we do. Stacy, St uh, Stacy, is it? Stacia? Uh, did I make a three? No, no, no. I just made this in my head and then worked out how I could make it. And um, I think I had two cracks at it, and then I worked out how to make it. And um, yeah, just got straight in and made it. And it was a learning curve because I've never made anything like this before. And the challenge for me was to get that heart point down here. This one's easy, but that one was the challenge that if I'd use a router, I wouldn't have got it like that. So I think in the early streams, maybe day two or day one or something or other. I, I made it live on the stream. And um, yeah, I was, I was pretty happy with that. So it's a, it's a technique that I developed that I can use um, again for other things, which I will. But what the idea of this is that to go into boxes and I'll show you what we're doing. <sighs> if I can find a box lid, 
that's finished. <laughs> Where? Ah, da Here we go. Oh. I don't know if this will uh, fit because this was made. Oh, there you go. This fabric is going behind it, so it'll get hot glue gun, uh, hot hot glued onto the back of the heart, and then gets inlaid into the box. And that's how it will look on the inside of the box. And the reason I put the flock in was so the flock would match the fabric and you didn't have that stark line of timber behind it. But no, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way there. Turning out, I must admit. Um, see you, Jeff. Catch you later on, mate. All the best with your dog. What pound weight is the shellac? Um, it would be down to about a one pounder now. When I mix it, I mix a four pound and then I break it down to about a one pound. You'll notice I haven't been diluting it in the rubber, which is a normal thing if you start out with a four pound mix, you put it into your rubber and then you put um, DAA on there to break it down in the rubber. I've got this thin enough that I don't want to do that. So I reckon it's down to about a one pound. But it starts out as a four pound stock. And we'll go back to this one again. We'll start at the beginning. <laughs> well, we should do that one day, Pam. We'll go. We'll go and have some donuts. I'll sand this when it's dry, but I'll most likely use about 1500 grit on it. Um, I am taking shortcuts to do this because of the time constraints. But it's like everything. If you know how to do it properly and you understand the process, or you can take some shortcuts. You notice I'm pushing a lot harder on this now. And that's really starting to choke up. I'm trying to get that light to do what I want it to do. There you go. There you go. Edelson, is that correct? Edelson, Edelson, well, welcome. Thank you all the way from Queensland, Australia, to you in Brazil. G'day, MC, how you going? Hey, thanks for sending me that um, 
uh, email the other day. I appreciate that. Nice to see what you're up to. And I'm sure they'll have a lot of fun with that that you made. I'm really, really appreciating the uh, emails that I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of people sending me in the projects they're working on and showing me what they're doing and a couple of people asking for a little bit of advice. But it, it's really great to see what people are up to and how they're um, progressing woodwork-wise. So if you want to send me one, my email address is admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au and I answer all the emails as I answer all the comments in the chat room. By myself, they're not automatically done. Now I sit down, generally I um, answer them in the mornings, but sometimes if I'm on the computer and they pop up while I'm there, I'll answer them straight away. But no, I'm enjoying seeing what people are doing. And some people I'm thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind going to a workshop if they're running a workshop. <laughs> really good stuff. Whoops. Yeah, wood and... So look at that fly. Where's the flies? They just love the smell of alcohol. Oi, get out of there. Maybe they didn't send me shellac off. Go on, buzz off. Literally. So this really is the um, bodying stage. I guess the filling stage would be the brushwork, but what I'm doing now is just giving it some body. And then you stiffen it, which means you, you rub pretty hard and you get a nice gloss. And then you spirit it off. Uh, spiriting off, you use no shellac at all you're just using straight spirit and you start with a white rubber and as you go the rubber starts to get color which is the shellac you're pulling off the job and that's also getting any oil that's still left on there from when you use it as a lubricant or as I did in this case when I put the oil on the base before I start shellacking. That one doesn't quite fit, does it? I'm gonna do something with that one. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you do figure of eights whether you do little circles like I was doing then, the main thing is when you finish, you finish off in a straight run. And that then takes all the marks. Whoops. There you go. The first time I've done that. Oh, it's not too bad. Got a little bit of shellac on the... Um, flock. Yeah, it's all right. Ah. Oh. Blitzleg, thanks for dropping in. Oh, the chessboards are good. Yeah, another good game. You can play. I've got a chessboard over there that I made. I had a friend pick me up um, a, a French chess set that I picked up on one of the auction sites. And I haven't seen him. I was talking to him last night, 
So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it when I do see him. But one of those things. And it, I tell you what, if you're in the habit of sucking your fingers or sucking your thumb, French polishing will stop you from doing that because you get this really bitter taste from the French polish. My hand is as sticky as all get up at the moment. Uh, Colton, g'day mate, how are you? What amount of profit is set aside to purchase more materials compared to the amount saved? I don't understand that. What amount of profit is put aside compared? Oh, okay, what percentage? Um, look, in most cases, and it seems to hold pretty true, my materials used to come in at about a third. So if the job, say for example, cost $300, it's slightly different now, but when I was doing a lot, uh, if a job came in at $300, I'd be pretty, pretty certain that the materials would be about $300. And that sort of held true. And I, I've spoken to other people in other businesses, and they reckon it's true as well. So about a third. A third is materials, and then two-thirds is... Well, it's not necessarily profit, because you've got a lot of other expenses involved other than just materials. You've got uh, power usage, you've got replacement of blades, you've got consumables, which is stuff like um, sandpaper and putty, uh, wax, and what have you. But yeah, as a rule, it, it works out to about a third. And I think that's pretty right with the quilts that Susie does too. Her material's coming at about a third of, that's retail. So if you're lucky enough to have uh, the option of buying stuff that's cheap in the retail, I would still charge out whatever job you is, is, is at um, full retail price. So, so for example, you, Here's the thing too, there's a shortcut a lot of people do, which is a no-no. They will tip shellac on the top of the rubber. No, you can do it with the DAA, but the shellac should go in the back and that way it oozes through the, the um, wadding in the middle and you get a much better even spread. Whereas if you put it through, because that comes out, if you look at that, there's nothing coming out, but when I squeeze it, you can see that coming out. And that's because I'm squeezing it through the wadding. So if you put your shellac through the rubber from the top, like through there, when you touch your job, it's going to be saturated because all that liquid is between your wadding and your, uh, the cover of your pad. When you're using just straight DAA and you're spiriting off, it doesn't matter because you're only using such a small amount. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so for example, if uh, a timber you want to use is $1,200 a cube or $5,000 a cube or whatever cube rate is, and you're able to buy it at, say, $200 a cube. Well, when you're doing a job, you should still charge it out at whatever the retail price is for that particular timber. Now, the reason is, there's every chance someone will come along and say, oh, look, I saw something you made for so-and-so the other day, and I'd love you to make me one. Now, if you've just charged them... Uh, $800 to make it because you've got some cheap timber and then you've run out of that cheap timber and you have to do a quote and the timber, for example, is $3,000 a cube. 
all of a sudden you've got to charge this person $1,800. And they're going to go, oh, hang on, you only charge my friend $800, why is mine $1,000 dearer? So that's one of the reasons you always charge retail. And the other thing is, why not? It's your good fortune that you got a good price. So that should be your reward. Because I'm telling you, down the track, if you keep on doing jobs, you're going to lose on some. It's going to go wrong. People are going to cancel on you. People are actually going to die on you. I've had that happen. I've had a job halfway through doing it and the person that ordered it passed away. I mean, I'm sure they didn't want to pass away and I'm stuck with this job that nobody else wanted and uh, I didn't get paid for it. And that's, I don't so much now because I work a slightly different way, but before I always used to ask for a third deposit on any job. That way, if they did cancel, or something went wrong, I wasn't out of pocket for materials because I'd got that third. And I think it's important that you have a cutoff, um, you know, yeah, look, it's refundable until I cut the timber. And then, no, it's not refundable because You've already cut the timber, you can't take it back. It's cut to a certain size, so you, you can't use it for anything else. And just because someone changes their mind or something or other, why should you be out of pocket for that? Oh, that's coming up nice. Starting to get a nice gloss on it now. So we'll keep going. Oh! Yeah, I'm happy with the Macs. They're coming up well. Blue finish. No, this is French polish. Then see, you've missed it. This is French polishing. This is um, the way they used to do all the antiques in the good old days. So it's shellac. If I was putting this on with a brush, it would be varnishing, but I'm using a rubber, and therefore it's called French polishing. Today, Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think we will be right. We'll get this done. The hardest part with this is that hole in the middle. If it didn't have the hole in the middle, it'd be a lot easier to do, I tell you. When you're doing a big job, there's other... We might do a bigger job later on. Who knows? We might, might even do one, one of these live streams. You never know. There uh, are other tricks that you do which give you a much better finish. Uh, Brian, I'm in the process of making a box with a carved leather insert in the top of the box, but not sure what I want to put finish on it. I don't want to ruin the carved leather picture. Um, 
I do leather work as my other hobby and like the combine. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Well, shellac would be all right. Why not put shellac on it? Can you take the leather out of the panel whilst you're doing the box? If not, you might just have to mask it up somehow. Um, so you don't get shellac on it because shellac will mark the leather. Unfortunately. Uh, it's starting to, starting to come good now. In fact, if you look at those strips that I was using, they're, they're starting to get nice and shiny now. There you go. They were just strips of plywood. But they're starting to get polished because um, they're getting the overage. What I'll do with this, when I've finished, I'll let them sit for a bit. Then, as I said, I'll hit them with maybe 1,500, wet and dry, very, very lightly. And then I'm not gonna spirit these off. I'll just stiffen them and then I'll polish them. So they should all be finished. By the time we come on streaming tomorrow, it might even be cut in size. That'd be fun. Yeah, well, it could colour it. I don't know. Oh, uh, Keza. Have you ever dealt with any voidable or unenforceable contracts within your business? Yeah, all the time. Because I don't, I really don't go that deep into it. So I'm a handshake. Well, I used to be <laughs> a handshake sort of guy. If you give me a handshake, that's solid. And uh, I'm happy with that. And I've done deals for tens of thousands of dollars um, just on a handshake. And I've never been not paid for a job if it's been delivered. As I said, the, the occasional one is unfortunate um, a chap died. But um, no, nah, I must admit I've never any jobs that I've done. Once I, and that's, that's another important thing. Hey, Mike, that's one for you. Um, if you ask for a third deposit, and they can't give you a third, don't go ahead. Because if they can't give you a third, there's a fairly good chance they won't have the 70% to follow. And if you're a bit unsure, ask for 50%, 50 half of it up front. But no, I've been lucky in as much as I suppose the people I deal with, um, they're, uh, especially with the furniture, they're all pretty well off people, financially well off, and so I've never had a drama. Money hasn't been, you know, a problem for them. Been a problem for me, but not for them. Gee, that's coming up nice. Got to, got to say. That not that beautiful? Just so nice and deep, and it's much nicer than a uh, than a lacquer finish, I think. All right, what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a rest for a bit. That's got DAA in it. I'm just putting that in there, putting that on there. Give it a bit of a shake. That keeps it moist, keeps it wet. Put the lid on there. 
wrong length, you idiot. That's the little one. The other one had the oil in it. Oh, where did it go? There it is. Oh, dear. All right, let's see if I can catch up. The old guy, Phil. Aussie polishing. Oh, there you go. The French polishing the Aussie way. Let's go this way. Uh. I've found out, I'm talking Brian a couple of minutes ago. I found that I finished the leather first before gluing it in place. Trouble is that it takes a lot longer to do the job. Well, it does. But if it's a question of getting it in there and it takes a bit longer and you don't get finished on it, it's worth the job. It might, it might be look at, look at how you're mounting the leather in there too. Could you, now there's a thought down the track when we do cock beating, you might be able to drop the leather in and put some cock beating around the outside of it. That way it would cover it up. Thanks, MC. Yeah, this, this actually, this is my sandpaper racks is what I put in the sandpaper. It's, um, you know, retail. Uh, you go to a paint shop, they've got racks with the sandpaper. That's what these are. A mate of mine had a... When he moved into a new factory, they were lying around. I said, oh, can I have those? He said, yeah. So I have had my sandpaper in them out there, but now I'm using them for that, which is a great idea. Hello, Bob. Don't get that one, MC. <laughs> what? You can smell stuff. No, you're not eating anything. What are you doing? You staying and you're going out. You stay in? Won't be long, mate. Go up to the house then. See what's happening up there. Could be some excitement. Might be some food. And there's no mud cake left. The grandkids have eaten that. Well, we've got a grain problem question here. What are we? The grain of the veneer is really... Yeah, yeah, no, it does. It. It's what they call pop. It pops, Max. Um... Yeah, I would, but also make sure that your glue doesn't touch the French polish because, I mean, you can get away with it. If you're going to do that, put a nice lot of furniture wax over the French polish and leave it there. Then glue in, then wait for the glue to dry, then wipe it off and the polish, the wax polish, will come away from the French polish and it'll take the glue away. What we do if, if I had, um, oh, hang on, say for example, I've got one over here. Okay, this cabochon here, if I wanted to um, stain this box dark brown, but I didn't want this part here to be stained, the insert, what you do is, Raw linseed oil again, rub raw linseed oil around there, then you can put your stain on and the oil will protect that from getting stained. So I, I reckon the, the same thing with French polish, only I would use a furniture wax. Do you ever have problems when going over transactions? And if so, how do you correct them? Oh, look, if I've made a mistake, I just ring them up and say, look, I'm really sorry. Um, I'm $500,000 out. No, honestly, if you find a mistake, I've found the best thing is as quick as you can, get in touch. If you've overpaid someone or someone short paid you, just, you know, ring them straight up. I have no qualms about money. If I do something and someone gives me cash, I'll count it in front of them. And it's not being rude. And I've had people say, oh, don't you trust me? I said, no, I don't. It's not that I don't trust you. It's just you might have paid me too much. That's how I get out of it. And I actually did it to a guy once. Um, he's a big, big biker. And uh, he gave me a great big stack of $50 notes. This was, oh, decades ago. 
And uh, I came in front of him and he's standing there like, well, don't you trust me? And he'd actually paid me $50 too much. I said, no, mate, but you might have paid me too much. In fact, you have, there's an extra 50 back. Oh, cheers, mate. So I've, you know, the, the people that feel uncomfortable about counting money is you. Uh, the, the person, if they're giving you some money, if they're trying to rip you off, they expect to get caught and they hope they don't. And if they have paid you too much, they will really appreciate the fact that you've given it back to them. And the other thing is, I've done it, you, you might do a job and oh, I don't know, it doesn't matter what amount it is, and you think, oh, actually, no, they're a really nice person or a nice couple or they're doing it tough or whatever, or no, I don't think it's worth what I quoted. And I've actually given money back and said, look, you know, there's X, Y, Z, like I tell you what, buy your wife something nice and don't, don't tell her I knocked it off the price. And, you know, you can do that. But you can only do that if you're charging the right amount. Well, give it to him, Trevor. Just you'll feel better about it. I'd love to see some pictures, Brian, if you want to email me or put them up on the, the um, post, it'll be fine. In the, in the room. And, and hey, sometimes you make a mistake. I, I tell you what, I um, bought an overlocker. For Susie, a big industrial overlocker, this chap was, he was retiring and getting out of doing, this <laughs> my hands, uh, doing what he was doing. And I bought this overlocker and it was only, it was $150. And anyway, he had some threads there and material and I thought, oh, Susie, you like that? So I bought this, this and this. And then I went to go, he said, have you paid me for the overlocker? Now, I swore blind that I'd given him the money. And... I said, yeah, look, I'm sure I have. So we looked all around his sewing room to try and find it. Couldn't find it. And then eventually he said, look, he said, you might have, don't worry about it. And I said, no. I said, I, I don't want to be like that. Look, I'll give you another 150. If you find it, give it to me back. And it wasn't until I got home I realised I didn't have $300 on me, so obviously I hadn't paid him. <laughs> but anyway, well, just have a look at that. That is just really... So now that's just the finish that we've put on, but it's gone on to that plywood. Look how shiny that is. And that hasn't been on purpose. And that's how good shellac is. And it's dry now. It's dry. Well, if you did that with spray paint, you'd be gasping and gagging and it would mostly still be soft underneath. Let's do that that way. Oh, there we go. Well, uh, you can do that on Woodworking Masterclass. There's Woodworking Masterclass on Facebook, MC, by all means. Oh, thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. Anyone else who wants to meet... Um, anyone else wants to email us? Admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. And if you're new, please hit the subscribe button if you like what you see, because I've just looked at the clock. I've finished what I'm going to do. I'm not going to start another project. So that's it. I'm going to wind it up. Uh, thank you, all the mods. Thank you, everyone in the chat room. All the new people that have come in, welcome. If you've been lurking and you're not sure, just hop in and say hi. There's a lot of great people in there that will make you feel welcome. If you've got any questions about woodworking or woodworking derivatives, by all means ask. Can't guarantee I know the answer, but what was the old thing? Between me and my dad, we know everything, and if there's a question I don't know, I'll say my dad knows it. But unfortunately, he's passed away, so you won't get the answer. Um, so, yeah, join us. Tomorrow I'll be... Uh, I'm hopefully finishing these boxes. I really am over it. But we could have another two days of them. And then we'll move on to something different and exciting. 
But if you want to see anything next week, as I said, Ray wants to know how to show up and round and hollow planes. We'll do that. Another chap wants to know how to do uh, cock beating. We'll do that. Oh, tomorrow I'll be making the inserts for the boxes and also putting the finish on the boxes. So, look forward to your company tomorrow. This is Steve pulling the shed door down saying, remember to keep it sharp. And more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Have a little bit of extra patience with each other because these are trying times. But we're getting through it. Woodwork is the key. I'm sure of that. So till we meet again tomorrow, I'm looking forward to having your company in the workshop. So is Bob at this workbench and we'll do something different all again. Till then, look after yourself. May your God bless you, look after you and just enjoy the best you can with what you got. Bye for now.